With Spider-Man coming out on the PS4 in about a month, I thought it would be a good time to look back on some of the games that inspired it. First, I want to talk about the games that everyone, including myself, will be comparing Spider-Man PS4 to, the Batman Arkham series. Back in 2009, Rock City Studios were relatively unknown, but the release of Arkham Asylum put them on the map in a big way. Not only because it was a great game, but also because it was a great licensed game. Licensed games were notorious for being simple cash grabs, but that all changed with Arkham Asylum. A game that not only set the bar for licensed games, but also reminded every AAA developer the standard to which every game should strive to meet. So without further ado, let's get into Arkham Asylum. The first thing you have to talk about when it comes to Asylum has to be the controls. In 2018, while you pretty much lose any credibility as a reviewer if you say that this game quote unquote makes you feel like Batman, back in 2009, the controls of Arkham Asylum were very important. Just the way you moved perfectly captured the essence of Batman. Even Batman's walk feels deliberate and forceful. The way he runs, the gliding, everything here was nailed. And of course, what helped Asylum's controls receive such praise was the combat and stealth. Asylum's combat doesn't sacrifice speed for power or vice versa. Every strike feels impactful, and at the same time, Batman can still fly across the room in a matter of seconds, because Rocksteady wasn't interested in sacrificing fun for the sake of realism. And while it's odd to see Batman flipping everywhere, it helps the combat become one of the greatest in gaming history. The perfect mix of impact and speed makes the combat incredibly satisfying, and the easy counter system encourages you to compete with yourself to see how high your combo chain can go. And while it's easy to counter, the combat, at least on hard difficulty, is still challenging and has a silky smooth difficulty curve. The combat was nailed in Asylum, just like how I remembered it, but the stealth wasn't nearly as strong as I thought it would be. The first couple of stealth sections are great. Swinging around on the gargoyles and taking guys out silently was fun, but as the game progressed, these sections got increasingly tedious, and the reason why, in my opinion, is the lack of options. In later games like City and Origins, you were given a lot of ways to take out your enemies. And to balance this out, you had multiple types of enemies, such as enemies that could jam your detective mode. This was a good implementation of difficulty. But in Arkham Asylum, that's not the case. You are given very few ways to take out your enemies in this game. And that, along with the structure of these rooms, are why these sections are so difficult. First, the structure of the rooms. This is a huge problem. Most of these stealth sections happen in very compact areas, making them very hard to hide in. And that really is where the difficulty stems from. Because you have such little room to hide and so little options, you're basically screwed if you get caught once because the enemies do so much damage to you and you just don't have enough time to escape. And when the rooms are scaled up, the game gets too easy. These enemies are all spread out, so you can easily pick them off one by one because there are no really special enemy types. And when it comes to the lack of options, this was a huge problem for me. First off, I felt as though that the gliding would always overshoot the enemy. I don't know why the ability to drop down from a gargoyle was locked behind an upgrade. This should be something that should have just been there from the get-go. Why I couldn't have done this was incredibly frustrating, because a guy would usually be close enough to me in proximity that I could just drop down and get him for the silent takedown, but no, I had to glide, and usually that resulted in me getting shot because he would see me gliding. This was a huge problem for me, and the overall lack of options here made an artificial sense of difficulty. In later games, when I died on hard mode, I died because because I screwed up. I wasn't patient enough because I didn't use the tools that I had in the right way. Here, when I die, I feel as though I don't have enough tools at my disposal. And the lack of tools mixed with the compact areas makes the only safe option the silent takedown. And because you can't beat down the enemies and stop the animation and alert yourself to the other enemies, no, you just have to sit there, watch the whole animation, and pray to God that someone doesn't come up behind you and start shooting you. And once I died, I was so aggravated that the next try, I probably just screwed up because I was so impatient. These stealth sections make me incredibly impatient because there's just an unnecessary amount of waiting, all due to the lack of tools needed to take these guys out. 
And while that's everything on the combat side of Arkham Asylum, you also have a good amount of puzzles too. In my opinion, the greatest strength of these puzzles is changing up the pacing, changing up what you're doing gameplay-wise. It helps keep the combat and the stealth sections fresh, no matter how frustrating the stealth sections may be in the later parts of the game. Not to mention the fact that you get to use Batman's gadgets in order to solve these puzzles make them ten times more fun and interesting. And of course, if you're going to talk about puzzles, you have to talk about the Riddler trophies. These collectibles will be in your face the entirety of Arkham Asylum and are scattered all over the map. While I never felt it necessary to collect all of them, it is fun to get a couple here and there. And it requires the player to use not only their problem solving skills, but also their exploration skills. Exploration. Traversal. This truly is what most of the puzzles boil down to. Looking around and finding a way to get from one area to the next. Not to mention you can, you can also explore and find interview tapes, which adds great lore to Arkham Asylum. You can find out about other characters, supervillains. You can find out about everyone. Hell, you can find out about Aaron freaking Cash, a random security guard who I now know is afraid of Killer Croc. It's such a small detail, but the fact that Rock said he went that extra mile to put that in the game shows how thoughtful they were in designing Arkham Asylum. And Arkham Asylum itself is a pretty entertaining place to explore. That is, of course, when there's a constant flow of combat and puzzles. When there's not, Arkham Asylum can get extremely boring. This is one of the huge contention points between Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, the design of these games. People who love Arkham Asylum defend its corridor-like structure, saying that you're constantly getting funneled from one point of interest to the next. There's no fluff here. And while I agree with that to an extent, there's still probably even more fluff than there is in Arkham City. At least in Arkham City, the gliding, the grappling everywhere is very fun. Here, the corridor-like structure forces you to constantly just walk and run, and it's not as fun as it would be to just glide around everywhere. I am not a personal fan of the corridor-like structure, especially when you have to do backtracking. There is a good amount of backtracking in this game, and once again, it doesn't matter in Arkham City because the backtracking itself is fun. Backtracking itself in Arkham City is not fun because once again you're going through tight quarters forced to walk. While it's fun when you're in the yards and you're given the opportunity to guide, you're almost always going to be faced with enemies. There's not anything high enough to glide above. Thankfully, the Joker is pretty much always on the comp, so you're constantly getting interesting things thrown your way, at least in dialogue respects. But when there are the occasional moments when you're not getting that thrown your way, it's just a bunch of boring walking. When you're constantly getting funneled in one direction, when you're constantly getting thrown combat and puzzles in every room, Arkham Asylum's pacing is probably better than any other game in the series. Unfortunately, there's just too much downtime and too much backtracking for it to have that title. It is not the best pacing in the series. It kills the pacing of this game, and at certain points, it's just flat out boring. Luckily, something that's not boring in this game is the story. As opposed to other licensed games, Batman Arkham Asylum doesn't try and loosely follow a story from one of the many Batman movies. Instead, it's a completely original story in which Joker takes over Arkham Asylum in order to build his own Titan army. It's incredibly interesting just for the fact that it's original, but Arkham Asylum goes above and beyond. There's constant intervention from some of Batman's greatest foes, Harley Quinn, Bane, Killer Croc, Poison Ivy, Zaz, Scarecrow. The constant intervention from these villains help break up the pacing of another Batman to Joker story and makes the game ten times more interesting than it already would have been. None of these characters have a set arc and are particularly interesting because they have interesting dynamics. They're rather just interesting because they're great portrayals of comic book characters. We know these characters, and so they don't need to have arcs in this game. They're interesting because of the material that they have from their comics. So, the intrigue that comes from these characters comes from their designs. How did Rocksteady make their iconic images different and new? How did these characters talk? How is the voice acting? And luckily, that's the star of Arkham Asylum. The voice acting by everyone is top notch. Specifically, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. They just fit their characters so well and bring such life to these characters. They're some of the best incarnations of Batman and the Joker ever in anything, video games, movies, comic books. The lack of personality that Batman has 
is perfect in Arkham Asylum. While the lack of his personality is usually his downfall and makes him more of a weaker character, it's perfect in Arkham Asylum because it's the playable character. You can insert your own personality traits into Batman. And not only that, he inserts personality traits into you. Because he's so forceful and deliberate during combat, and he's so focused on taking down the Joker, you're focused on taking down the Joker. And the Joker turns into a perfect foil, not only for Batman, but for your Self. Batman is stoic and, appropriately, Joker is bombastic, constantly making jokes. You are focused. You want to get this game done. You want to finish it, and the Joker is constantly putting obstacles in your way and is constantly teasing you. And it's the perfect marriage of gameplay and story. It's a wonderful dynamic that only works if the gameplay is there, and luckily it is. And because of that, the relationship between the player and the antagonist, the relationship between Batman and the Joker, all of it molds perfectly, and it makes for one of the greatest gaming stories of all time. What unfortunately sort of balances out the game, you know, sort of sets it back, are the boss battles. These boss battles are incredibly underwhelming. While it's awesome to see all of these villains come in and try and fight Batman, these bosses are some of the weakest in gaming history. This is one of my biggest worries for Spider-Man on PS4, that the bosses suck because, oh my god, did Rocksteady screw it up the first time. Zaz, just throw a battering at him. It's over. Bane, freaking Bane, the physical equal to Batman, is made into a complete chump. He just charges at you and throws rocks, and you have the stupid freaking slow-mo to throw batterings at him. You're just throwing a bunch of enemies. They're the challenge. Bane isn't even the challenge in his own fight. I mean, what the hell? And his attack patterns are copied into these dumb titan enemies who show up more towards the later of the game and are just not fun at all to fight. It's so much more fun to fight multiple enemies than to constantly wail and throw batterings and have these slow-ass fights with these juggernauts who are just completely mindless and not challenging and not fun at all. Gang fights mostly make up most of the arc of Arkham Asylum's boss fights. Harley Quinn, do you get to fight her? Nope. You don't get to fight her. You get to fight a bunch of thugs. There's constant praise among Scarecrow's fights, but I mean, they're surrounded around platforming. Why? Why in a game centered around combat and traversal? Why would you have it about straight up platforming? It's just does not meld well at all. And not to mention, you have gang fights. They're just throwing a bunch of enemies at your way. You have a bunch of skeletons that are equivalent to thugs. And it's just mind-boggling how anyone at Rocksteady thought this was actually fun. Killer Croc has built up the whole game, the whole game to be this threat to Batman. And you get into a sewer, and he just runs at you, and you throw one batarang, and he's done, and you occasionally run from him. What the hell, Rocksteady? This is so lame. Poison Ivy has her stupid plant, and the Joker, oh my god, the Joker, it may be the single worst boss fight in gaming history, that's not an exaggeration, Joker is truly the epitome of everything wrong with this game's boss fights in one encounter, it doesn't match the character at all, Joker is not supposed to be this big thug, but no, we just turn into the Incredible freaking Hulk at the very end. There's gang fights. It's slow. It's not challenging. It's not fun. It is so underwhelming. And I think that pretty much sums up the third act of this game. There's an excessive amount of backtracking between the Botanical Gardens, Killer Croc's Lair, and Joker's Madhouse. The combat when it comes to the stealth at least, is significantly less fun because it's just frustrating. The combat itself is filled with titan thugs who are not fun to fight at all, and the story collapses. The relationship between the Joker and Batman is just simply not as interesting anymore because you have to go through a bunch of monotonous gameplay shit to find it. That relationship, the thing that carried on the story for the first two acts and enhanced the gameplay and vice versa, it all falls apart. The story is original and super fun due to the intervention of multiple villains. All the characters are voiced excellently. The lore is fantastic. Exploration is fantastic. The combat is still fantastic even to this day and while the stealth is frustrating the boss fights are underwhelming Arkham Asylum can occasionally be annoying to explore and the final act collapses under its own weight I can't deny that the amount of fun I had going around beating up thugs 
getting annoyed at the Joker and feeling like Batman and being so determined to take him out while he teases me was just too much. Arkham Asylum was, at the time, and arguably still today, is the best superhero game of all time. While it's not in my opinion, while those flaws do hold it back, I still feel as though that it's an incredible experience that any fan of not only superhero games, but games in general should experience. Batman Arkham Asylum gets a 9 out of 10. Next time, guys, we'll be reviewing Arkham Asylum sequel. In my opinion, the magnum opus of superhero video games, Batman Arkham City. See you guys next time.